What is up everybody? I am super excited to be bringing you some Hearthstone Battlegrounds today. This is, man, I will tell you, I am very surprised after playing this a little bit. I was not expecting it to be this good. It's essentially, to sum it up, too long didn't read, Hearthstone Battlegrounds is essentially teamfight tactics, TFT, that Riot made for League of Legends, except just with cards. It's a little bit of a spin on it as you have, you know, basically champions that have different abilities that you can use each round whereas the little legends don't do anything if you want access to this beta you can still grab it right now it is actually <clears throat> accessible to everybody tomorrow so by the time you see this video it will be up on november 12th open beta you're good to go you don't have to buy anything or spend a dime but if you had pre-purchased a scent of dragons or attended blizzcon and you have a virtual ticket i think there's one other way to get it too you would have already had access to it so it's very very fun i highly recommend getting involved in the beta if you can uh, on the 12th give it a shot but let's get into it we'll show you some uh some first action from the game Also, before we get started, please do not forget to hit that subscription button below. Any feedback and support is always appreciated. If you've played the beta before, if you've had access to Battlegrounds already, hit me up, comment below, let me know your thoughts, let me know if you think I'm right, if I'm wrong, if you played this version of this deck better. Always love and appreciate the feedback. So, for this video, I'm actually going to be doing a little bit of a voiceover. Uh, this was actually during one of my streams when I had started playing. This was during... Probably the first few games that I had started playing Battlegrounds. So, I'm going with the Demon route. As you can see, the very first guy that I picked is actually Wrath Weaver. It's probably one of the better, if not the best, one-drops in the game. Every time I summon a Demon, as you can see when I summon these Void Walkers, it gains plus two, plus two at the cost of doing two damage to me. So, that just gets bigger and bigger and bigger throughout the whole game. So, it scales incredibly well. And when you upgrade it, it gains plus four, plus four, which is insane. So the goal here is I have the Divine Shield hero power. I want to obviously get the Divine Shield on him at some point, and he's going to be my big beefy body. So speaking of that, demons in general, they're kind of, they got a lot of big beefy bodies, but they also have a lot of tokens. Um, so Void Walker is one of the larger cards at the end of the game. It does exactly what it does in the normal Hearthstone game. It summons three Void Walkers, and, um, but it's a six cost, I believe, or five cost. I don't have it in front of me, so... But that's your goal is to get that at some point as it helps incredibly with almost anything that your opponent has to throw at you because taunt is probably the only thing that really affects the attack order so you can protect and defend uh, different minions that, that you choose. Uh, those also synergize incredibly well with soul juggler. So soul juggler is every time you, you summon a demon, you do three damage. You'll actually see that come on the field a little bit later. So... As you can see here, I got the Divine Shield on the on the Wrath Reaver, and it's already starting to do a decent amount of damage. It's already at a 3-3, which pretty much challenges everything on the field. So you can see that the other opponent right now, he's got a decent field, but my Wrath Reaver, as weak as my field is, is able to basically keep me on par with him a little bit. I did lose that round, but as you're going to see here in a second it's going to start to kind of snowball a little bit once I start getting some other demon stuff in play. So what I'm doing now is I'm getting an Amalgam. So Amalgam is actually really good in this game. It's one of the first things that I kind of learned about it, and that is that it is able to be buffed by pretty much every card in the game because a lot of this is based on beasts and murlocs and demons and all those different subcategories. So having that in there is going to allow you to use other cards that you would normally not be able to use with demons. So Generally speaking, I found that you want to pick up an Amalgam pretty early on in the game. The other card that I picked up is a demon that basically just buffs the field. It's not a demon that's going to end up, or actually I don't even think it is a demon, but it affects demons. It's not a demon that's going to end up in my final uh, amount of characters, but it does buff the field. So I'm going to go back to the gameplay footage real quick. Uh, I'm going to do this a couple times throughout the game just so you can kind of hear my thoughts for a little bit. Whew, that was quick. Got it off. Whew, that was quick. All right, so now I can actually, I can start shifting towards the token. Oh, really? Just trade Divine Shields? That's stupid. As you can see, I'm already thinking about moving towards tokens with this strategy because what I'm doing now isn't going to stand up. And the ultimate strategy is going to be using that Soul Juggler to 
basically do three damage to the opponent's field whenever some sort of token demon token dies so i'm already starting to think about shifting towards getting those things one of the things i've taken into consideration is getting up to level five or six which is when i can actually get the void lord and that's probably the most difficult part of this if i'm going to get the void lord i'm going to need to get up to that level to be able to get it or at least get to if i, I think it's six so if you get to five at least if you get a golden copy of something, it'll give you that level six free monster. And you can actually, you know, hopefully discover it through that card, which is probably the easiest way to get the cards that you need, at, you know, at this point in the game. That's what I've seen anyway. So now, as you can see, I also have Imp Gang Boss. So that's another crucial card to this strategy. It's same deal. It summons tokens. They die pretty easily. So that's probably the, uh, the easiest way to get tokens early on. And it's kind of a mid-game thing, right? So it's gonna it's gonna connect you to the Void Lord. It's gonna get you to last those few turns that you need to actually get up to that level and get the Void Lord going. So, and as you can see, as I mentioned before, that Wrath Reaver, you're looking at 13-13 now, and that is just gonna keep getting bigger and stronger every single turn. So right now, I'm just focusing on keeping a good board presence, buffing my minions, getting that Wrath Reaver nice and buffed up, nice and big. Looks like now I'm going for a Golden Wrath Reaver as well. And uh, hopefully, I think that happens in the next couple of turns here. I could get rid of that and do a Divine Shield on that. I feel like that might actually help more because then I can... So let's do that. Divine Shield. And we're going to do another Imp Gang boss. Yeah, because that, yeah, that's better because that buffs that. I get a Divine Shield every turn on that. So hell yeah! Because I know I'm going to keep this puppy too. Now again, I'm keeping the uh, the Amalgam because I want to eventually put Poisonous on it. With a Toxman or something. So, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need Poison. I've come to find that Poisonous is very freaking important in this game. Like, very important. Why, yes, Justin. You're 100% correct. Poisonous is important. This, <laughs> from what I have seen so far, poison you need Poisonous. Because if they end up getting some ridiculously large monster, like a Wrath Reaver... The only way you're going to kill it is through Poisonous. So there's two things that you can see that I'm kind of gearing up to do is find a Toxfin. And also I'm starting to sell off, if you see, some of those those buff creatures, the, the guys that actually buff and do the plus one to plus one to all demons and plus two to plus two, or sorry, plus two plus two to one demon. What you have to manage throughout the game is getting rid of those smaller creatures that aren't going to scale towards the late game. That's what those guys are. They buff the rest of your field, but they're pretty useless otherwise. You can see I just sold another one there. And now I'm making room for either something that's going to be in my late game build, or as you can see right here, another Crystal Weaver just to buff my field again. So uh, they, that's happening pretty much all throughout the mid game until I find the, the cards that I'm actually going to use for my final build. So let's, let's get back into the game for a second. Cards that summon minions summon twice as many. Do we want to do that? Uh, I don't want to. I don't have anything that I need yet, so I'm going to wait on the Cadgar. Oh, nice first hit, baby. Hell yeah. Get it. Nice. Just give me give me a quick one of those puppies. So I think Demon has to shift towards like the token. Otherwise, I don't know if I can win. Oh, yeah. Take that 14 to the face first place that rhyme <laughs> yeah don't mind my crappy jokes <laughs> so um all right so what's going on now is this cadgar i'm still at odds with cadgar i'm not sure if i like him if he's good if he's bad i don't know i ended up i think using him in the final build here as you'll see i think it might have actually screwed me over the problem is he's only a 2-2 body. So even though he's going to summon, like if an imp gang boss gets hit, it's going to summon an additional imp. That's all well and dandy, but the imp is only 1-1 one, one at the end of the day, and that's not really that great. So now if you take into the uh, consideration you have a soul juggler, which you will see here, I think, in the next turn. Yeah, okay, so now you're doing three damage twice, but that's that's three cards that you have to have in play just to get three damage twice off whereas you could replace that that gadgar with something else much bigger like a void lord which is going to summon three demons anyways so i think i made a mistake in actually grabbing the cadgar eventually here a little bit later on um on the bright side i did get the toxfin 
So I was able to get the poisonous onto the amalgam. The problem is, I think I made another mistake here, which is what led to eventually what happened at the end. I actually let that toxin go through for a round. Uh, actually, now that I think about it, I don't think it actually mattered towards the end of the game, but for this round anyways, I'm actually curious to see if I win this right here or not. I forget. But, or sorry, the last round. It would have been the last round. And I think I ended up winning that last round. So I don't think it mattered. But typically, you're going to want to sell stuff that you buff other things that turn. So the Toxfin, I should have just played, buffed the Amalgam, given it poison, and sold it. And then continued on with my plan. Uh, the way that I did it, I had it in a round one turn, which was stupid because I essentially have a 1-2 body that does nothing. So I also got Malganus. I think at some point uh, I did not get him yet. You'll see him a little bit later and I'll, I'll kind of discuss how he interacts with everything. He's just a giant buff. Uh, another buff that I got was right there when I just sold. I uh, guess plus one, plus one uh, Defender Argus, which everybody knows that from regular Hearthstone. That's a great buff. It puts Taunt on the Wrath Reaver, which makes it insane. 13 or 1818 with a Divine Shield and Taunt. That is kind of nuts and kind of good. And that's why it's a good one drop. Ooh. Ooh. Your other demons have plus two, plus two. Ooh, no, no, no. Okay, I'm freezing this, but that's going to be a hard decision. Cadgar or Malganus? Depends on how much I can protect this thing. Ooh, that's going to be tough. So, yeah, it that is tough. Um, Although now, it was tough then, not knowing what I know. Now, I would have easily just not have gotten the Cadgar, gotten the Malganus, and honestly just dug for more Void Lords. I should have honestly, because I end up selling an Imp Gang boss here to place down a Void Lord in the next couple of turns. I should have never done that. I should have had two Imp Gang bosses, two Void Lords, the Malganus, like that, that would have been perfect. Now, in retrospect, you'll see why that wouldn't matter, and I'll, I'll get into that in a second. It didn't end up mattering anyways because of the stupid card that's in this game right now. I don't even remember the name of it, but it's broken. Uh, but just in the future, yeah, I don't think Cadgar's really that great right now. Maybe for early game, but you really want to try to dig for them four and five star and six star monsters instead of relying on, you know, a two or three card combo. So let's get back into the game here for a second. That would have sucked. Yeah, buddy. Oh, yeah, we got this. Oh, we got this. Holy crap, we got this. All right, what do we do? Do we get rid of one of the imp gangs I think we get rid of Malganus no we get rid of one of the imp gangs and that's where I made the mistake I should not have done that that was stupid but hey you live and you learn but yeah that's what digging for uh, for five and six stars get you usually you can find what you want I don't think there's a whole lot of five and six star monsters in this game so typically I think you're gonna land on something good so I was able to do that with the void lord and I should have just stuck with the Void Lord strategy. That is why this deck will always get you top four. If you are constantly getting Void Lords to combo off with Soul Jugglers or even Imp Gang bosses, if you get Imp Gangs with the Soul Jugglers during the mid game, it will at least carry you until rank four so that the bottom four people are out and you'll at least get top four no matter what. And now it's just a matter of whether or not you can get the, the Void Lords and the Malganuses. And actually, another card that I didn't even play this round was Annihilation Battlemaster, which at this point would give me, like, plus 20 health on him, which makes him incredibly hard to kill if you can get Taunt on him. And I didn't even have him, and I ended up getting second place. So, very, very, very good build. Just, you know, a, a few critical mistakes. Cadgar is questionable. So, if you are going to play this, just think before you actually choose to, to go ahead with, uh, with using Cadgar in it. Oh my god, I barely lost. Oh, Jesus. And that's the end of the video. But quick shout out to Rob in the Hearthstone Facebook group. I knew this was coming out. I knew Battlegrounds was a thing. But him posting on it reminded me of it. Looked it up. Had no idea it was like TFT. Pretty freaking awesome that it's actually like TFT. So it's a great game. Um, on top of that, don't forget, next week, Legends of Runeterra is going to be out beta. Actually, by the time you guys are seeing it, that'll be this week. The open beta will be on the 14th. I will be all over that like white on rice. So make sure you guys are stopping by my channel. There will be a ton of Legends of Runeterra content next week. So until next time, I hope shit just works for you guys for the rest of the week. Peace out.